Hello everyone and welcome to another dynamic paint tutorial. Yes, that's right. We have not explored the entire system yet. In this one, we're going to take a look at using PNG sequences or image sequences to actually set up our dynamic paint to be related to UV maps and image textures rather than um, attaching colors to vertices, right? So how do we do that? Well, you should know by now that we're going to need a canvas and a brush, right? And that is the first thing. And we need to set up something that, um, well, gets the paint and something that delivers the paint, right? And we can do that on our cube. We can do that on any object. Um, let's actually do that on Suzanne. So delete this, shift A, mesh, and let's go for monkey Suzanne, all right? So let's go to our modifiers and just add a nice subdivision modifier. There we go. And we can set this to two, right? And shape that smooth so it's beautifully smooth. Then we can actually right away go to our physics, set up a dynamic paint system to canvas. Let's open this up a little bit more. And now we have a format of a vertex and a format of an image sequence. All right, beautiful. And then we have a service type paint, displays waves, right? Anything we already had before. And if we now open up our output, we have got a UV map, a cache path, and we have a button to bake. <sighs> Interesting. Okay, so how do we use this? Well, first of all, I'm going to set up a little animation, right, that we can use. Um, so let's say we want to drip some paint on this Suzanne, for example, right? So I'm just going to hit shift A, mesh, and let's just add a little sphere. And I'm going to scale this down, move it up, and shade it smooth. All right, beautiful. Let's add a dynamic paint to this as well, and name this brush, and add a brush. Now the paint color, I'm going to set this to be a mask, which means I'm going to use a white object, a white paint brush on a black surface that creates the highest contrast mask that we can get. Hex FFF FFF. That is the color white. So then let's go back to our canvas and give it a little initial color of color and black. There we go. And so let's set up our UV map as well. Okay, because now we're actually attaching our brush strokes, let's name it to a UV map. So we need to define a UV map and we can just select the default one because Suzanne is pre-unwrapped for us. Okay, beautiful. Now, if you want to know your UV, what UVs you're using, drag out a different window in the UV editor and go into edit mode in your 3D view and you can see how your UV map is looking. Okay, so this is the UV attached to Suzanne. So if you have your own object that doesn't have a UV, let's say... Um, let's say I'm just duplicating Suzanne. We have no UVs. All right, so let's create a different UV map. If I unwrap this from view, let's say we have a poorly unwrapped object like this. Um, this is something that's not really useful for our dynamic paint because everything overlaps, all the, the surfaces overlap. We want something that's actually unwrapped properly. And if you don't want to take the time to add seams and stuff like that and really get into UV unwrapping, I can understand that. You can press U and just go for a smart UV project at an angle of like 66. The default one is fine. And then it's going to unwrap that for you. Okay, now since we're creating a new texture that is going to be linked to a UV map, it doesn't really matter how many seams we have or how it is going to be unwrapped. So as long as they are separate, as long as they don't overlap or anything, we should be totally fine, right? So I'm just going to, well, this is an example of how it can look. We can just test it out on our original Suzanne, right? With a beautiful UV map. And let's get more into this. All right, so I'm going to animate this. Let's say I'm going to start this off here. Let's go to item and insert a location and a scale as well, I guess. And so let's go to frame 60. I'm gonna move this up here and scale it up a little bit, right? Insert keyframe. And then at frame 120, I want this to end, let's say at the front somewhere there. Scale it down like that and insert keyframe, insert keyframe. And let's say there, that's fine. 
that's fine here it moves a bit too much to the inside so i'm going to move that out at this frame and insert a new keyframe and scale too let's just do that and move it to the right right so this looks quite fine it looks like something that can actually add some paint i'm gonna save this ctrl s and name this dp for dynamic paint and uh, well whatever i'm just gonna name this uh sequence right naming is always hard um let's hide this suzanne for a sec press h and let's actually try and do some baking set your frame range to 120 that's how many keyframes um, i have set here and make sure to set your canvas up to match that as well okay so i'm gonna set my end to be 120 and let's set the resolution of the image sequence to 1024 all right um, just to you know try that out and perhaps it's too much we'll see all right so now we have a sequence that we can actually run all right so if we now bake our sequence it's gonna be caching at the folder that's located here um so you can just click on that open uh, folder button and you can set up a different path i don't really care about this right now so i'm just going to bake this as this bake for the time um actually i'm resolution up too much and um, let's set this to be 512 for now <laughs> and bake this again and um, let's see how it goes right it doesn't really take a long time once it's finished beautiful um we can open up that folder and we can see how the images look and um, i suppose you can see that right now so i'm just going to add this in blender right so we can open up a new shader window shader editor hit new and I want my material, of course, to be linked to this image sequence. So shift A and find an image sequence and find your folder. And actually, I need to copy this, right? If you find an image sequence, it will take you automatically to find your image sequence, right? So right now I have my um, Windows Explorer and I'm just going to paste my path at the top. And I'm going to select Ctrl A or just A, all the images and import image sequence. There we go. And connect the color to the base color. And now let's go to our viewport shading and see how it looks. Okay. So it's compiling shaders for a sec. Just give it a bit of time. You know, it always takes, takes some time. In the meantime, I'm going to enable auto refresh and cyclic as well. Why not? And I'm going to go back to frame one and see if EV ever wants to compile. This should not take that long to compile at all. <laughs> but here we are. We can also just, if we want to skip that, set this to cycles and just go to rendered view right away. That's usually going to skip that. There we go. So if we now play this, and there we go. Beautiful. I'm not sure why it is so incredibly slow right now. But here we are. Perhaps I set up uh, that resolution to be a way too high. <laughs> right, here we go. It's moving nicely on our mesh. Isn't that cool? All right, um, let's go back. Let's see if Eevee is finally compiled or not. There we go. Looking much better. Okay, so you see the resolution is fine. It's not too crazy. Um, and it's actually leaving behind that trail, right? That we now bake to an image sequence, which means that even if we now take away our object, it will still be there, right? And you can set up your dynamic paint however you want it to be. You can set up your brush however you want this to be as well. Um, so we can actually make this drip and stuff like that, just like we used to do that in the dynamic paint tutorials, right? So let's say... Um, effects i want this to drip a little bit right and then we can just rebake that and um, let's say do we want some velocity how much service velocity effects dripping we don't really want that so let's just go with baking this one giving it a little bit of time we may have to reopen that sequence in order for it to refresh so i'm just gonna hit the open key once again press a and open image i guess and now it is a beautiful image sequence and if you rebake it to a 1024 or 2048 resolution which is what i did right now you'll get way more detail and we'll be able to use that to texture right so let's hit shift a and find 
a color ramp. And the first thing I'm going to do is connect this there and this in my roughness. This allows me to uh, differentiate between the roughness of my paint and our object, which is nice. Um, I'm going to switch this. Object's going to be very rough. Paint's going to be very glossy, for example. And we can use this in a bump node as well. Into the height, there we go, into the normal. And to lower the strength a little bit. So you can see that we get a little bit of a jagged edge still. So let's shift a, a color ramp right there. And drag this a little bit to the left. Just so we don't have that much um, crazy edges. All right. Quite nice. Now this is going to look better, of course, once we're in cycles. But the initial steps are there. Right. So let's go to cycle. Let's just see how this looks in terms of the bump map and stuff. Play it. Uh, enable auto refresh again. I'm not sure why that was turned off. You can see we got a nice little layer of paint on top that we can make str more strong and less strong in terms of how um, strong that edge is there. Um, and now just change the color with another color ramp to, for example, mm, let's say pink or whatever, purple. Make this, yeah, for example, white to get a nice, a nice looking balance. And there we go. Right, perhaps I want my object to be glossy as well. So turn that white of the roughness into black as well. And we got a nice rough surface. Now add a little HDRI, right? Open. And that's pretty much that. That's how you do it. If you like that, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We'll enjoy any one of those. And then we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.